Let's bring in House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer. Congressman, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Uh, further to what Jim Jordan was saying, did you in your committee get any more clarity into allegations by Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler that Ms. Wolf discouraged asking witnesses about, quote, the big guy and then asked for the affidavit to be changed. Uh, that email says, quote, someone needs to redraft the affidavit. There should be nothing about political figure one believed to be Joe Biden in here. Did, did you get any more clarity into any of that? Not from that deposition, but at the end of the day, I've said this before, all roads led to Leslie Wolf. If you look at the IRS was clearly investigating the Biden uh, crimes, and they knew that Joe was a central, an integral part of that. Uh, as they approached Joe Biden, that's when Leslie Wolf stepped in and told him to stand down. From the sources we have in the FBI, the same thing. The FBI was also investigating the Biden family. I mean, this says a lot about the Biden family. And then we know the Department of Justice in, in listening to the different U.S. attorneys that were uh, in different, in varying jurisdictions. Uh, the reason they couldn't come in and, and complete an investigation was because of Leslie Wolf. So Leslie Wolf uh, has a lot of questions to answer. And it's my understanding she didn't answer very many questions in that deposition. Okay, so are there going to be more depositions between now and the holidays? What do the next few weeks look like? Yeah, right. We're, we're trying to bring people in. A lot of people are using the holidays as an excuse. Uh, their attorneys are saying, oh, we've got Christmas uh, commitments that we can't make. But uh, we are scheduling depositions for January, and we expect everyone who's been issued a subpoena to come before us and answer some questions. This has been a very transparent, very Thank credible, you. very substantive Thank investigation. We one, followed two, the money. Four, we four, have four, thousands four, of pages five. of emails. And we need to know exactly what happened so we can connect the dots and, and try to determine why the Bidens weren't held accountable years ago. Uh, on the subject of people coming before the committee under subpoena, will you seek a contempt of Congress charge against Hunter Biden for showing up here on the Senate side in a very public forum, giving a statement and then skipping out? on the subpoena and the de deposition that he had been subpoenaed for. Uh, a lot of people draw parallels to Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon, both of whom were charged. But Debbie Dingell uh, voiced a very important difference yesterday in which she said that Messrs. Navarro and Bannon refused to testify at all, even in an open session, whereas Hunter Biden said he'll come before Congress in an open session, but he doesn't want to do it behind closed doors. So on that basis, would you seek a contempt of Congress citation? Yes. I mean, look, Hunter Biden displayed the arrogance and entitlement that we felt like he's had the whole time. When he showed up at the exact same time he was supposed to be in for a deposition, a, a normal deposition from a normal congressional investigation, we had over a dozen members of Congress from both parties in there. We had dozens of staffers in there. We had tens of thousands of pages of documents, hundreds of specific questions. And he just goes out and basically gives Congress a middle finger, goes out and says he wants to make a statement and have a press conference. Then when he got through making his statement, asking for pity, then uh, he drove off in his car and wouldn't answer any questions. I mean, this is how the Bidens have operated. And just because the DOJ, IRS, uh, the FBI, and every other government agency that was supposed to catch people like Hunter Biden for the crimes people like Hunter Biden committed, doesn't mean that we're going to turn a blind eye and treat him any differently. He's going to be treated just like everyone else. He doesn't set the rules. We set the rules. This deposition will be transparent. We will release the transcripts, and then we'll have a public hearing. Okay, so um, obviously with this being the Friday capping the week where we know the House GOP did vote to formalize this Biden impeachment inquiry, um, there are many critics of the right saying there's still no evidence. Where will Republicans get with this, Congressman? Well, we have five payments going directly to Joe Biden where we've sourced the revenue that went to Joe Biden from the Biden influence peddling scheme. We have emails and text messages that show Joe Biden communicated with all the people that he once said he never met. We know that there are hundreds of pseudonym emails that the White House will not turn over to us that were on government emails where Joe Biden used a fictitious name to communicate with Eric Sherwin. We know this because that was in the indictment of Hunter Biden in California. We've asked for these emails. 
This should have been a simple FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act request from the White House because these were government emails, non-classified. They will not turn them over. They are obstructing us, and that's why the Republicans voted unanimously to proceed with impeachment inquiry because we're being obstructed. There's evidence everywhere that shows of multiple crimes by the Biden family, mm. and Joe Biden was involved in all of them. He hasn't been truthful with the American people. We need to get answers. The majority of Americans want answers. That's what we're obje what our objective is. Uh, Congressman, just before we go, real quick, if I could come back to the Hunter Biden contempt of Congress citation. Have you spoken with officials at the DOJ about this, and are they favorably disposed to pursue charges? Well, that's a great question. I have not spoken to anyone at DOJ. Jim Jordan is the point person on the Oversight Committee. Obviously, he's chairman of the Judiciary mm -hmm. Committee. He's mm -hmm. the point person to communicate with the Department of Justice, but I haven't. You'll have to ask Jim, but uh, we'll see how that turns out. We'll see whether or not there's a two-tier system of justice. We'll see if Merrick Garland's going to be consistent in how he treats people who defy congressional subpoenas. Okay. Congressman, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank Merry you. Christmas. We probably won't see you before then. Thank you all. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.